Hey guys, welcome to another video Simulator. My name is Serge. Uh, in today's video, I want to talk a little bit about my BMW X5 2007. Some of the problems I experienced with it, like in the beginning and let you know how much I got this car for uh, and um, all of the problems that it had and some of the solutions that I came up for those problems. So this video will be for those of you that may be curious and buying, fixing and flipping cars. And at the same time, if somebody owns a BMW X5 or any other BMW that's gonna have similar type of issues, I'm going to have some uh, solutions for you uh, in this video. So we're not gonna waste any time, so we're gonna go ahead and uh, begin. Uh, so this is a 2007 BMW E70. Um, this is an X5 uh, with seven passengers. Um, I picked this up at an auction. It was only a thousand bucks, but with all the fees and everything, it came out to be like 1500 bucks. Plus towing, um, I think I paid around like 200 bucks for towing. Um, this car was sold as basically um, like kind of like ready to go, like run and drive car. Uh, they failed to mention the fact that it had mechanical issues and transmission issues and various other issues. They just said run and drive, buy it now. So this was a buy it now price. I did not bid on this car. Um, this BMW was a repossession. So when it was repossessed, it was all trash inside. Uh, looks like a lady was driving it. There was like wigs here. There was all kinds of trash, guys. The car was super dirty, uh, was not taken care of. Uh, it was missing half of the oil from the engine, half of the oil from transmission. Uh, transmission was in malfunction mode. So initially when I started up the car uh, and I put it into drive, it I put it to drive and it shifts right back into park, okay? Um, so that I don't waste your time. This was a $15 fix, okay? Most people is going to say that this is going to be the valve body issue. It can be, however, sometimes you gotta tackle uh, the parts that are like the cheapest, like what is the cheapest, okay? There's like this little plastic piece, like a cube, that's attached like to each other and it's got like, like a rubber grommet around it, okay? Sometimes these things crack and when they do, it causes the same type of issue. You're not going to see this piece unless you remove the valve body. And of course, for those of you guys that's not familiar with the transmission, uh, you gotta first drop the pan, then you remove the valve body, okay? But you gotta be very careful when doing these things. You gotta do some research. I got some videos uh, on my channel, kind of like what I've done and I explain things thoroughly. So I'm not going to go into detail how to like do these things, okay? But I'm just telling you, it was that plastic piece that has failed for me. Now, mine was not cracked. So initially when you look at it, and because it's not cracked or broken, you could say, okay, this is a valve bite issue, but it's not, okay? Uh, this piece was just not sealing properly. And when I removed uh, the pin from the transmission, I noticed, first of all, that the pin was leaking. I already could see that, it's just leaking all around. There was um, this pin underneath the transmission pin that was catching like all of the liquid, if anything comes out. It was full of oil, dust and everything in there, and that whole transmission was wet. So that is a huge indicator that something's wrong. It's leaking fluid. So you gotta look at that core problem first. Okay, it's leaking fluid. All right, so if it's leaking fluid, maybe I could just add some fluid, okay? That potentially can solve the issue. But for me, since I'm going to be driving this car and I want this car to be working and functioning properly, I went ahead and I ordered those pieces that I needed because I knew that they fail and might as well just have something. So I ordered on, the, on eBay for 15 bucks. There was a whole kit. There was a round uh, electronic connector piece. There was like four grommets, which did not fit my BMW. Uh, it said it will, but it didn't. But my rubber sleeves, they were fine. Uh, I did not have to replace them, but anyways, okay. Uh, what I have discovered when I removed uh, the, the oil pan, not only that the oil pan was leaking, but the valve body itself, the bolts was loose, okay. So possibility that yes, I could have just maybe tightened up the bolts and you know, maybe things would work. But why tighten up the bolts if that part is only $15 and you know, to replace and I cannot even see the see it unless I remove the valve body. So, so okay, first sign, okay, transmission, valve body, maybe somebody been there before, I don't know, but bolts was loose. I could actually loosen them by hand. You know, that's how loose they were. Not all of them, but some of them were. Um, and they need to be properly torqued, okay? 
Now, once I removed that, immediately I looked at that uh, plastic piece, I could tell that the rubber itself has worn down and it was hard and it was just kind of like way down. So there's a possibility it was not sealing properly. Now, with mine not being cracked, there's a possibility that I could have tightened up all the bolts on the transmission that would have worked, okay? But for me to know that it's not cracked, I first needed to remove the body to, to be able to see it. But you can actually get to that piece without dropping the whole thing. So you can just remove all the bolts, get the valve body to sort of like drop a little bit for you, and then you could observe what's going on. And then, yeah, you can just reach in there with your hand, pull it out, put it back in, and then just realign the valve body, and then you're gonna be all set, okay? Just look up the torque specs and tighten everything out properly okay but also use common sense sometimes the torque specs they're not tight enough and it's just not gonna work so I did it by hand I went around the whole thing and I tightened everything how it's supposed to be you know but I, I do it by feel and I trust my method because it has always worked for me but if you've never done this before you're not gonna have the right feel for it and this takes time to develop the right feel okay um, but anyways moving on once I did all that and I, I basically added seven quarts of transmission fluid and you might be thinking did you drain the torque converter no I did not but the way that you add transmission fluid is with a, like a syringe style type of tool you could have some other tools I have both that pumps it in you know like using like a like an air uh, system kind of like like an air compressor you hook it up you could do that but I chose not to do that that thing is a little bulky and since I'm not on the lift and I'm underneath the car it was much better for me just to use a syringe to be able to do that okay so that's what I did anyways I bought the proper uh, transmission fluid uh, proper ZF fluid that you're supposed to have like I bought ZF lifeguard that's the fluid that I went with and it's like $25 a quart for seven quarts you do the math not cheap um, also I did replace the transmission pan all of the transmission bolts Did I need to replace the bolts not really but I had a new pan with brand new bolts uh, it also came with a with a, a electrical connector the round one for the electronics so um, it was missing a seal okay it's a good thing I ordered two kits because one of them had a new seal this one was missing a seal why I don't know could I just reuse an old seal probably can if I'm in the bind but I had a brand new one so I installed that um, why did I replace that transmission pan well because the oil filter is built in uh, the transmission oil filter is built in into the pan okay so you just replace it and you just be done with it okay so when I done these things this repair probably all in all cost me you know with the fluid with the pan uh, with, with those like a like little part for $15 right about maybe like $300 okay now I could have bought a rebuilt valve body and you know that would have still worked and I would have never then known the issue what I like to find out is this replace little parts that make sense that doesn't cost a lot right this is not called throwing parts at it but at the same time nobody really knows what that transmission has been through this car right now has 226,000 miles as a matter of fact it just turned that okay as I'm driving um, it had 220 uh, 223,000 miles like 400 so I have put these miles on it myself and uh, the car the transmission has been phenomenal okay now there's going to be other issues that uh, I would like to talk about and um, I want to record that in a separate video uh, that's going to be about uh, like the car was overheating how did I solve this issue what did I do I want to tackle that in that individual video but this is going to be more like just the drivability transmission just not basically going into drive it's just parking now I will tell you this I did trick the transmission by resetting it manually uh, by just basically like doing like manual reset you like basically press the brake like many times with the key in there and just sort of like resets it I don't know if that worked or not but I used my computer and I just basically reset it you know and when I did I just well I I deleted the cost of the transmission okay uh, I did not reset the adaptations I just simply deleted the codes uh, and then it allowed me to shift it into drive and I was actually able to drive the car a little bit and then it starts acting up again it does not want to pull good does not want to go up 
uh, any type of ramps. It just didn't have like any power whatsoever. And all of these things was caused by simply with a, you know, by a transmission, okay? Um, so that is, that is important, you know, to know, obviously. Um, what else did I could uh, tell you that uh, really was uh, challenging? So uh, one thing that I noticed on the drive, okay, while I was driving, okay, there's no temperature gauge, but I noticed uh, there's smoke started appearing underneath my hood, okay? These thing, these um, modern BMWs, and this is still modern by 2000 standards, uh, they have a safety cutoff switch, so if you start overheating this engine, uh, it will just shut it off and you're not gonna be able to start it back up, okay? There's there's that, okay? Um, I also wanna give you a bit of advice. Um, I overfilled the transmission with oil. I uh, uh, No, excuse me. I did not overfill it, but it may seem like I have. Uh, but here's the thing, when you're refilling this transmission, uh, there's a point at the top where you start refilling it and you have to wait till, it's, uh, till it starts uh, actually leaking out, okay? The, the car needs to be perfectly level. Um, I ended up using four ramps. I drove onto those ramps, and when I did, the car was level. I actually used a level, and I know everything was level. So when I filled up the transmission, uh, I know that I filled up the proper amount of fluid. But here's the thing, when I put seven quarts like I supposed to, nothing really leaked out, okay? So I just stopped at the seven quarts, uh, even though I did not uh, drain uh, the torque converter. But with, the, with that being said, everything is still working. Now, if I did have another quart, I would have actually went ahead and added some. Uh, however, I did not have an extra quart um, because I only ordered seven uh, for this type of job. Now, I do have another car that's having similar type of issue on the Range Rover. And I will be making a video on that as well. Um, in, in, in this, in this type of a uh, situation uh, with the Range Rover. Um, and I'm just gonna basically just, you know, give you a few notes in case you guys have it, because you know, Range Rovers use BMW engines too. Uh, in my case, it's using a Jaguar engine. That's a 2006 uh, Range Rover Sport. I really love it. I bought that car for myself and this one. Uh, there's no resale value on this BMW, like really. Um, Kelly Blue Book, it's like, $3,800, so, you know, like suggested retail price. Um, even though I bought it for $1,500, the amount of money and time that I spent on it, I would be losing money if I sold it at that price. So there's no way I'm doing it, okay? Um, I just I just kind of like wanted to throw it out there because you might be saying like, why? Why are you doing all these things? Like for instance, right? But um, the reason that people are, well, the reason that these BMWs depreciate so much, well, first of all, they're old, right? Second of all, everyone's afraid of them. Uh, BMWs typically um, typically are more expensive to work on. Are they worse cars? They're not worse cars. BMW is very innovative uh, type of company and they're constantly innovating. And especially in those early years, early 2000s, they experimented a lot and they would test out various parts to see if they're gonna work, especially on the X6 type of series. That was their, you know, test, test subject. Anything kind of like at like an um, that basically ends with like a like a two or a four or a six, they use them as te test subjects, and then once something you know is working right, then they use it, and you know like a next generation cars, or if it doesn't work, they just go ahead and update it uh, and refresh the parts uh, to make them better. Personally, guys, I think BMWs are reliable. Um, and this is the reason I'm making like this like little video series for you just to explain to you how cheap I got this thing to run There's really like no reason to fear this thing if I wanted to I could have just done that transmission and Just continue driving this car which I technically I'm doing but it was also overheating So I need to cover that topic and explain to you why I was overheating uh, But before I do I do want to let you know about engine oil. Okay when I replaced engine oil um, I made a mistake and I hate to admit it, but, but it was a learning experience. Uh, and I like to share it with you guys that way. Look, we all make mistakes for some reason, for some reason. Um, I try to do this thing kind of fast and when you do fast, you make mistakes. So I drained the engine oil 
through the oil filter housing and it basically uh, obviously only poured out like one quart of oil uh, the location of the oil plug since I was not familiar with this model was kind of hidden it's a little different and uh, I did not spot it right away you know just did it I, I, I was kind of like in a rush and I was so stunned that only a quart came out and I thought like how the heck was I driving on a quart because when I bought this car I added two quarts to the engine just in case because I was gonna start things up I wasn't sure how things are um, I you know this particular BMW does have a oil dipstick um, so you could check it that way the computer here kind of sucks to try to check you know the fluids and whatnot uh, this system I don't like it on this one the 2010 has a much better system I tried a uh, 535i that I had and that one was phenomenal this was really buggy uh, I don't like it it's easy to use but it's just buggy just stuff doesn't press so th that's challenging to check so it's a good thing that it does have a dipstick on this one so I checked the fluid and I had you know pretty low fluid so of course I had a couple couple quarts but when I only removed the oil filter and did not remove the rest of the oil there were still four quarts of oil left in that engine um, and it needs seven okay so with that being said I added seven to the four the car started right up no lights came up indicating that I overfilled it so I thought everything's fine I actually drove the car it was fine and then luckily luckily this home like when it happened because I idled the car a lot because I was also dealing with an overheating issue and I was diagnosing it at the time so I needed to idle a lot not really leave anywhere you know and um, I was figuring that stuff out but what, what ended up happening is after a while the, the car just cut off and then it did not want to start up start up and then I cooled it down a little bit and uh, it started back up and I was wondering that's weird what's the issue because typically uh, what can happen is of course the car's not gonna cut off but what can happen is on the warm car if you shut it off and your crankshaft position sensor is bad it will not want to crank up again but my question was why is this shutting off like why is the car just shuts off and actually I started up again like the very first time I did it like it started right up and then just died again uh, and before it died it started like revving itself between uh, zero and and like like 500 like, woof, 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 like that and then it just died so I noticed that right away I'm like what's going on uh, so I remembered I'm thinking oh crap I overfilled the oil I don't know how much oil it is so I end up draining it measuring it uh, turns out that I drained my seven and then I drained the, the, the four uh, and when I did I realized okay it had four quarts too much so while the car worked it did not like the fact that there's too much oil so something was not working right and of course you don't want to drive with overfilled oil this is the first time ever that I overfilled oil seriously uh, Mercedes one time overfilled my oil and I brought it back um, because I had a brand new engine installed and they overfilled my oil and the oil like lamp came on like showing that it's high oil but BMW didn't say none of these things and also there's no temperature gauge so it's very hard to know is the car overheating what kind of condition it is luckily for the overheating I use a computer and I could just monitor the proper temperatures and I know what they are uh, so that helped me out but anyways I don't want to really go off topic too much but I want to give you guys some advice okay kind of like in this video um, so when I drained all of that oil and I put proper amount seven quarts in there everything became fine I idled the car for a very long time it would not shut off and since then I put over 2,000 miles on it everything worked beautifully of course I experienced radiator leaks like fluid leaks you know stuff like that um but that's besides the point that's like for another video because i think that needs its own video just for me to explain how simple it was to solve all of these things uh it didn't cost me any money basically so this transmission uh fix was really realistically that part just 15 dollars. it's just i decided to do it right new pan new bolts new fluid okay if i skipped out on this stuff i could have just Put all the oil back in maybe just added some oil uh let's say like you really don't care about the car too much you could have like just cut corners and say well i trained this for let me fill it up here's a couple new quarts of uh transmission fluid let me just add it to it but maybe when you drop the pan you see loose bolts tighten them up okay that's like cutting corners stuff away just tighten them all up right 
and then you put the pan back up, put all the fluid in. Because look, sometimes it's cutting corners, but sometimes you can experiment and see, hey, if I just tighten up these bolts, is it going to work? And then you put the pan back on. But if you fail to check if that little plastic piece is broken or not, then you're gonna have to drain the fluid again. You gotta have to open up the pan again. You have to do everything over again. Then you have to remove all the bolts. That's why I like to do things right the first time. But I'm saying, if somebody's like low on, low on cash, yes, you can have that approach. The only thing that's gonna cost you is time. Uh, that's it, uh, and some wrenching. Uh, but certainly, if you tighten the budget, just buy yourself some fluid, right? And maybe just add some fluid to it. Like, don't even do nothing else, just add fluid without even doing anything else. If the fluid has helped you, would like, don't, like you don't need to remove the pan just to add fluid, just add fluid. If the fluid has solved the issue, well, there you go, there's your problem. You could just leave it at that, just add fluid and just keep driving the car. With cars that having this many miles on them, the key to owning these cars is spend the least amount of money and get the most drivability out of them. Because really, realistically, 20, you know, 226,000 miles on this BMW. How, like, what kind of hopes and dreams am I gonna have uh, with this car with spending the amount of money that I that I did spend on it? Get as much life of, out of this thing as possible for the smallest amount possible. And then maybe put another engine in it if it fails, and another transmission if it fails. Uh, or just keep fixing that stuff. If I could still fix it, then fine. But if, let's say like it's a catastrophic failure, then in that case, yeah, just put another engine in there or maybe it just makes sense to put another engine instead of rebuilding it because if you start rebuilding an engine, you go down the rabbit hole of all kinds of things and then before you know it, it's $11,000. $11,000 later, rebuilding an engine for a car that's only worth $3,800, not so fun. You know, if it's, uh, if it's your own collectible car with very little miles, I totally understand it, like an M-Series car or whatever, but this is not. But with that being said, I really love this car. I really enjoy it. Uh, I will tell you this, guys. After replacing the transmission fluid and, uh, of course, radio fluid, of course, uh, engine fluid, um, I did not replace my um, uh, my four-wheel drive fluid yet because I haven't done that service yet because I got to replace the motor uh, and I will be making a video on that. But the car is super alive. You barely press the gas. It wants to go. The engine feels very strong, just lively. It just wants to work. It just is asking for you to, to push it, okay? Now, this might seem very slow. I did time the zero to 60 acceleration on a, a highway that's like 60 miles an hour. Uh, and what I realized is it only accelerates zero to 60 in nine seconds, okay? That's quite low for this BMW. It should be six and a half, but what do you expect for 226,000 miles? You're not gonna really expect much, but that's enough. This is a 6,000 pound SUV, it's a family SUV. I did not get this thing to race it. Um, if you want an M car, I would probably not even recommend an, an, an M SUV, even though they're nice, just because like, look, what are you getting an M for, right? Uh, M performance. Like, this is a heavy SUV. The thing that really works is light car, fast engine, go fast, you know? So it's not like you're gonna really track this thing. But as a family, it just gets up and go. It's just so alive. It just wants to drive. It takes no effort to go up any kind of hills or anything, just does it perfectly. And uh, I'm getting 15 miles per gallon. By the way, I'm gonna go ahead and cut this thing off. But anyways, guys, thank you for watching this video. I appreciate y'all. I'll see you guys in the next one. If this has helped you out in any way, shape or form, or just for the effort, please hit a like in this video. And um, I'll see you guys in the next one. And subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Take care of yourself. Bye-bye.